Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the World of Warcraft New Player's Guide. In this series we'll cover some topics that aren't really that well explained by the game. This won't be a New Player's Guide in terms of very basic aspects of World of Warcraft, so things like movement, questing, leveling up, things like that are covered by World of Warcraft's tutorial system. Instead we'll cover some things that players are just kind of expected to know. If you have any suggestions for topics that you'd like a guide about, let me know in the comments below or just use the links in the description to contact me. My name is Tusky and in this video we'll discuss keybinding. Now it's fairly easy to keybind in World of Warcraft, but there are a few basic things that you need to know in order to keybind smartly and successfully. The goal of keybinding, after all, is to make it easier to access your abilities in the heat of combat. But what keys should you be binding spells to? What spells should you keybind? I haven't really covered this before, so let's go into some detail about that now. We'll be using my Frost Mage as an example here. So, as you can see, I have a variety of different abilities, some of which I'm going to need to keybind and some of which I can just click on. It's very important that abilities that I use frequently are keybound, and that they are bound to keys that I can reach very easily. So, what counts as a key that I can reach easily? Well, take this as an example. This is how I play World of Warcraft. I have my left hand positioned on the left hand side of the keyboard, with my pinky finger resting against shift, my thumb against the spacebar, and my remaining three fingers positioned on the D, W, and A keys. These are alongside the S key are what most players use to move around. It's called the WASD or WASD system. Since you have to move a lot in World of Warcraft, you want to have your left hand on these keys as much as possible. The right hand is positioned entirely on my mouse, and I use it to target enemies, rotate my camera, and rotate my character. So, since I want to keep my hands as close to this position as they possibly can be, I like to keybind my keys around my left hand. Good examples of keys that can be really easily pressed by the left hand are Q, E, T, G, Z, Tab, Shift, Tilde, and the 1 to 5 keys. If you have fairly big hands and you can reach the 6 key easily, like me, then you can use that too. Alongside these, you can also use your middle mouse button on your mouse. Now, some mice will have extra buttons on the side and some mice won't. I'm going to assume that we don't have extra buttons on the side in this situation. I prefer to use the buttons on the side of my mouse as a keybind for my push to talk key anyway. So we also have pressing down on the middle mouse button as a keybind. Finally, you can use your F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5 keys. These aren't magnificent key bindings, and they can be a little bit hard to hit, but they make for good key bindings nonetheless. Using these will disable your ability to target yourself and your party, so be wary if you use them. Also, if you do bind the Q and E keys, like I do, then you won't be able to use them to strafe. It's not that big of a deal, though. You can easily strafe your character by holding the right mouse button and pressing either W, A, or W, D. There are other keys around here that you can use, such as F, V, C, and X. However, I prefer to keep these at their default key bindings. F will select the target of my target, V turns on and off my nameplates, C opens my character panel, and X is used to sit down, or if you're in the air or underwater, to go directly down. I also don't key bind tab because I do occasionally like to tab target. I also don't use Z since I like to be able to sheath and unsheath my weapon at will. That's not really the best excuse, but it's the way I like to play. Again, this is all about making you comfortable. So for these reasons, I prefer not to use these keys, but really, it's up to you. Keybinds are about making you comfortable. This is just how I do it. Take it with a pinch of salt and make sure that you're comfortable with the way you play your class. Okay, so we have 1 to 5, Q, E, T, G, F1 to F5, and the middle mouse button. This is only about 15 keybinds, which, as you can probably tell, won't be quite enough. So, to compensate for this, we can start to use modifiers. Now, a modifier is either the shift key or the control key. These two keys, when held down, will modify the keybind for your next button pressed. So, for instance, if I pressed Q, it would activate ability 1. If I then pressed Shift Q, it would activate ability 2. And Control Q would activate ability 3. They would all be bound to different keys. So, with this in mind, we go from using 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, Q, E, T, G, F1 to F5, and a middle mouse button, to using those, plus Shift 1 to 5, Shift Q, Shift E, Shift T, Shift G, Shift F1 to F5, Shift middle mouse button, and we can go even further and use Control 1 to 5, Control Q, Control E, Control T, Control G, Control F1 to F5, and Control middle mouse button. 
This takes us from 15 key bindings to a staggering 45 key bindings. That's much better. But it can be a bit overwhelming, so take your time with these. One of the biggest mistakes you can make when key binding is to overwhelm yourself with key bindings and not have any idea what's going on. Take it slowly and make sure you're comfortable before you key bind more. Okay, so let's assume that we're going to use the key bindings that I've described just now for my mage. Let's actually put them in place. You want to be organized about this so that Really, you can use the keybinds for every single character that you play. First thing we're going to do is get the action bars ready. Assuming we have no add-ons, we'll need them all for this. Okay, so we'll open the game menu, go to interface, go to action bars, and then turn them all on. I prefer to have always show action bars enabled to keep things nice and clean. Next, we'll go back to the game menu, go to key bindings, and scroll down to the action bar functions menu. Here we have access to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, minus and equal keys. You can leave this be if you want, but generally I only use the 1 to 6 and sometimes the 1 to 7 keys. For now you can leave it as it is, or you can unkey bind 7, 8, 9, 0, minus and equals. For now I'm just going to leave it as it is. Next, you want to scroll down quite far until you reach multi-action bar bindings. These are your extra action bar buttons. The bottom left action bar is here, the bottom right action bar is here, the right action bar is here, and the right action bar 2 is here. Okay, let's start with the bar directly above our main action bar, that's the bottom left one. We want this action bar to be full of key bindings, that way we can keep our abilities close together so that we can see their cooldowns all the time in the same part of the screen. At this point, we can start keybinding. Just remember that you want to keep things organized. With this in mind, I prefer to have my keybinds organized by their modifier. So, on this first action bar, I'm going to bind Q, E, T, and G for the first four buttons. Then, I will use Shift Q, Shift E, Shift T, and Shift G for the next four. The last four buttons will be Control Q, Control E, Control T and Control G. This fills up the action bar nicely and allows us to keep the Q, E, T and G buttons and their modifiers close together. Next, I'm going to move on to the action bar to the right. This is the bottom right action bar. Here, I like to have abilities that I won't use as much as my main ones, but that are still fairly important. So, here I'm going to use the 1 to 6 keys with the Shift modifier. So that's Shift 1, Shift 2, Shift 3, Shift 4, Shift 5, and Shift 6. Next on this action bar, I like to have my middle mouse button keybinds. Here I will bind Shift middle mouse, middle mouse, and Control middle mouse to make it nice and neat. This leaves the rest of the action bar free, and we'll talk about that later on. Next up, we'll move to the right action bars. Here I like to have my F1 to F5 keys and their modifiers. So on the right action bar 2, which is the one closest to the game world, I will use F1 to F5. Because the first button on the action bar is at the top, and I want these keybinds at the bottom, I'll be starting from action button 12 and going down, as opposed to starting at action button 1 and going up. So we will bind F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5. Next, I'll go to the right action bar and use Shift F1 to Shift F5. I don't actually use Control F1 to Control F5, but you can use it if you want to, and there are rooms on these bars to do so. You'll also notice that I haven't used Control 1 to 5. Again, I don't think I'm going to need that many key bindings, but also that because I have a pet, I want to use the default key bindings of the Control key plus the number keys to control it. I find that what we've got set up now is more than enough for most classes. Experiment and make it how you want at this point. Okay, we have our action bars keybound. Now, what abilities do we put where? Well, I like to try and keep things organized and have a kind of theme of abilities going for the different keybinds. So, we'll start with 1 to 5. These abilities are the ones that we'll use the most. These abilities will be ones that you will generally use every single fight. So for the Frost Mage, these abilities will be Frostbolt on 1, which is the ability that I use when nothing else is available. Ice Lance on 2, which is my main source of big damage. Frost Jaw on 3, which I will use on cooldown to help control my enemies. Frost Bomb on 4, which I will use every single fight and Frost Nova on 5, which I will use almost every single fight to control multiple enemies. Finally, on the 6 key, I'm going to put my Interrupt, Counter Spell. I like to have my Interrupt on the 6 key regardless of the class that I'm playing. So, those are our 1 to 6 keys. Next, we'll move on to Q, E, T, and G. These are abilities that generally you'll want to use on cooldown or whenever the mechanics make them available to use. So, on Q, I will put Frozen Orb. 
This is a great area of effect spell that I will be using almost entirely on cooldown, so having it on Q is a great place for it. On E, I'll put the macro that I've created for my Water Elemental's Freeze ability. It's a great spell that I use on cooldown to generate resources for myself and to control my enemies, so E is a great place for it. On T, I'm going to put Cone of Cold. This isn't an ability that I'll use on single enemies, but instead I'll use it to control multiple enemies by slowing them, so having it on T is good for quick use. And then, on G, I like to have my crowd control. Here, it will be Polymorph. On my Shaman, it's Hex. G is my crowd control button, and it's on that key so that I can hit it nice and fast in an emergency. Next, we'll move on to Shift Q, Shift E, Shift T, and Shift G. These are abilities that you won't use every single fight, but that you'll still want available in some fashion. So, Shift Q for me will be Ice Barrier, which is a shield that I will want to have on myself as much as I can to mitigate damage. For this reason, having it on Shift Q allows me to refresh it very easily. On Shift E, I'm going to put Evocation, which is an important spell for mages that has a fair cooldown. I will be using it in combat, so I'll have that on Shift E for ease of access. On Shift T, I'm putting Arcane Explosion, which is an area of effect spell that I don't use that often in all honesty, but having it on Shift T for quick pressing and spamming is a pretty good idea. Finally, on Shift G, I'm going to put Blizzard, which is my go-to area of effect spell. Next up is Control Q, Control E, Control T, and Control G. On Control Q, I like to put my Dispel, so for mages, it's Remove Curse. If I were on my Paladin, it would be Cleanse. That's kind of the idea. I can hit it on Control Q whenever I want to Dispel, which will be important in Warlords of Draenor, and it will be out of the way so I don't accidentally hit it and waste mana. On Control E, I put my Mirror Image. This is a pretty big cooldown, and having it on Control E means that I don't hit it by accident. On Control T, I'm putting Berserking, which is the Troll Racial's cooldown to increase casting speed. Finally, on Control G, I'm putting Icy Veins, which is my next big cooldown as a mage. As you can see, I've got my cooldowns very close together here, meaning that if I want to blow all of them at the same time to do tons of damage, I can just press Control E, Control T, and Control G really fast. Keeping things organized like this is a really good idea. Moving on to Shift 1 to Shift 5. These are abilities that I don't use that often, but that I will need available in a pinch. On Shift 1, I'm going to put Fire Blast, which is just a quick but weak spell that I can use to finish enemies off while they're low on health. On Shift 2, I'm putting Frost Firebolt, which I don't use at all unless I get a Brain Freeze proc, which is activated from my Frost Bomb exploding. At this point, Frost Firebolt becomes instant cast and very powerful, so having it on Shift 2 is nice and easy to hit for a quick Frost Firebolt to the face. On Shift 3, I have Deep Freeze, which is a 5 second stun on frozen targets with a 30 second cooldown. I don't use it all the time, but having it on Shift 3 is good for when I want a nice long stun. On Shift 4, I have Spell Steal, which is my anti-magic ability. Using this steals a beneficial spell from an enemy, so having it out of the way on Shift 4, but not too far away from my left hand, keeps the spell ready to use. Finally, Shift 5 is my Alter Time. This is kind of a cooldown, but it's really tricky to use right, and mages need to use it very precisely. For this reason, having it on Shift 5 means that it's very hard to press by accident and screw up. Okay, now on to Shift Middle Mouse, Middle Mouse, and Control Middle Mouse. I like to have utility spells that I need in a pinch, really fast for these buttons. So, on Shift Middle Mouse, I'll put Slow Fall, which can save my life if I fly off a cliff or I get knocked really high into the air. On Middle Mouse, I'll put Blink, which is my class's movement ability. For the Shaman, I will use Ghost Wolf here. I can press this button really easily to quickly move around. On Control Middle Mouse, I will put Ice Block, which makes me immune to all damage for a few seconds. It's my, oh my god, I'm gonna die ability, and it's really easy to press while, again, being hard to accidentally press. Moving on to the F1 to F5 keys. Here, I will put abilities that I don't use very often at all. On F1, I will put Summon Water Elemental, for quick resummoning of my pet if it dies. As you can imagine, I don't use this very often. On F2, I will put Ice Flows, which is a little bit different. It allows my next spell to be castable while moving. I actually use this fairly often, but having it on F2 allows me to quickly go from a 1 to 5 key, which is what all of my cast time spells are bound to, and hit Ice Flows right after I press a button. On F3, I have Invisibility, which is a good cooldown for survival. For this reason, I have it on F3 nice and out of the way, ready to hit when I need it. On F4, I have Flame Strike. I never use it, but on the off chance that I need it, maybe enemies are immune to frost magic for instance, I at least have it bound. It's really out of the way, so I'll never hit it by accident. F5 I have bound to disenchant, and we'll talk about why in just a bit. 
Finally, we have the Shift F1 to Shift F5 keys. These are really hard to press, and as such, very important abilities should go here. The prime example for a mage or a shaman is their Bloodlust, otherwise known as Time Warp for the mage. This ability, if accidentally pressed, can ruin an entire raid. For this reason, putting it on Shift F1 makes it really damn hard to hit without contorting your fingers a little bit. Put your really, really important abilities on the Shift 1 to Shift F5 keys, and you'll likely never hit them by accident. So, those are the keybinds I have for the mage. As you can see, however, there are multiple spells that I do not have bound. My professions, for instance, my mass resurrection spells, my mana gem, my buffs, such as my armors and my arcane brilliance, my hearthstone, my portal spells, my teleport spells, my conjure food and my refreshment table. These can all happily be clicked since you use them all outside of combat. Outside of combat, clicking on a spell is just fine, and if anyone ever tells you otherwise, I'm afraid they're just wrong. Clicking is just fine if you do it outside of combat. Finally, let's talk about a few keybinds that you can use for utility. For instance, I have J and Shift J bound to my mount and flying mount respectively. I have these on the bottom right action bar. This way I have a button that I can hit out of combat. J is quite far away from my left hand, so it's not good for in combat things, which is fine because you can't mount in combat, and it lets me mount up nice and fast. I also have F5 bound to my disenchant, as I just said, which makes my life much easier when disenchanting lots of things that are in my bags. This saves me from having to close my bags to find my button, pressing it, reopening my bags, and then clicking on the thing I want to disenchant. Generally, a non-combat utility spell that requires a lot of casting, like a mount or a disenchant, could benefit from a key binding, but it is not necessary. Finally, one last thing to mention. On all the keybinds that you don't have anything bound to, feel free to put whatever you want there. We haven't talked about things like health stones, which would be pretty good on the F1 or Shift F1 keys, your extra action button, which I have bound to H, things like quest items, which if you use them a lot, you can easily put on one of the Shift F1 to F5 or the F1 to F5 buttons. So things like that. Really, you can put them anywhere. Make sure you're comfortable with how you play your class and make sure that your key bindings work towards your play style. The key bindings that I've shown you are just how I do things. So make sure that you take it with a pinch of salt and that you experiment. Make sure you get it the way you want it. That's all that matters at the end of the day. So there we have it. Keybinding in World of Warcraft is very important, and hopefully this video helped you figure out what kinds of spells to keybind and what keys to bind them to. If you have any questions about what has been discussed in this video, you can contact me using the links in the description, or you can just leave a comment. I'm more than happy to have a discussion about keybinding, World of Warcraft, or anything else in the comments or via email. If you have suggestions for guides that you'd like to see on the World of Warcraft New Players Guide, then please let me know. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you the best of luck in the World of Warcraft.